it's been over? Just a few months. Hmm? Just a few months. But they're beginning to catch on. Half a dozen restaurants went broke here. Interesting. Struck out. Man, it looks like the only way I'm gonna get my name in the trade papers is to drop dead. Ha, <laughs> I sure qualified last night. You spend too much time on the books, buddy boy. Yeah, too much for singing, not enough for graduating. That's my problem. Somebody better check my addition. I show a profit for last week. Wow, this co-op's banking more bread than a bakery. Yeah, what's my share come to? Of the debts or profits? No wonder I can't get an agent. You through adding, Mel? No, just checking. You go right ahead. He took off in a fiery chariot. He took off in a fiery chariot. Where can Elijah be? Some say he's in the land of Nod. Some say he's picking golden rods. Others say he's with the angels playing a golden harp. Did he go to the magic mountain? Did he go to the magic mountain? Where did Elijah go? Some say he stands at the golden gate. If it is he, don't make him wait. Telling tales was his only sin. Gabriel let him in. Please be good to old Elijah, please be good to old Elijah, please be good to old Elijah, wherever he may be. His hair is white as falling snow, his voice is like the winds that blow, maybe you'll meet with him one day, somewhere along the way. Tell him we miss old Elijah. Oh, how we miss old Elijah. Oh, how we miss old Elijah. Where can Elijah be? Say to Sega Wai, divide yourselves among you. Tell me, are those your knees or your smuggling walnuts? Want some coffee, Pete? Black? Why, certainly. I'll go out for it. Would you like some, Fred, baby? Go out for it? Get it here. We got espresso coffee. We got mocha coffee. We got royal coffee. We got anisette. We got Viking. We got all kinds of coffee, but for black coffee, I gotta go out for it. Excuse me. Here you are, man. You threw a hubcap. 
So far, so good. I don't dig profits. Makes us look commercial. It's all on paper yet. But don't make any down payments. The bank's putting us on? Hey, man, nobody's putting us on. It's right here in the bag. We're in business. Dig the wild beret. How uncool. <laughs> Wonder what he's auditioning. <laughs> Got me. Is there uh, anything I can do for you? You're standing in my light. You're uh, standing in my club. Was your club. What do you mean, was? My name is Bird, Irving Bird. You can call me Irving. Wrecking Company? Who needs you? Didn't they tell you? Why do they always leave it to me? Who, who didn't tell me what? Oh, Lady Crawford, she bought the property. She's gonna put up an office building right where you're standing. How about that? Oh, not this time she isn't. They always say that she always puts them up. It's monotonous. Hey, Mel, what's he talking about? We've got a lease. I know we have. Ironclad. Look, Mr. Bird, uh, my own lawyer drew it up. And neither you or this uh, Crawford's gonna wreck it. I didn't know they had a lease when I bought the property for you. Case of deliberate misrepresentation on the part of the owner. I'll file suit tomorrow. That will take months. I want to start building as soon as I can get the bids in. Miss Crawford, you can't start building. This parcel's in the exact center of the property. Break their lease. You haven't seen this lease. It was drawn up by some kid friend of the singer who runs the club just out of law school. He must have spent a month in everything he learned putting it together. It's like a bomb shelter. You asked me to remind you of the time, Miss Crawford. Oh, yes. Do you have the airline tickets? They're in your briefcase. And my niece's birthday party. Everything's here. The uh, caterer's instructions, guest list, and parking. I am perfectly capable of carrying my own briefcase. You have many valuable qualities, Mr. Webster, but being a gentleman isn't one of them. That's why I hired you. I'll be at the meeting in San Francisco until Sunday. If anything that can't wait comes up, you know where to reach me. Of course. Have a pleasant trip, Miss Crawford. My trips are never pleasant. About this lease. Just break it. I don't want to know what means you use. But I'm sure you'll be equal to the occasion. Well, thank you, Miss Crawford. But the young shyster who drew up the lease. Yes. I know. He sounds quite competent. And I'm sure his fees would be most reasonable. I'll do my best, Miss Crawford. Mr. Webster, your efforts don't interest me, just the results. I want that lease broken, and I want it done immediately. I thought you were off to San Francisco. I'll be going as soon as I change. There were one or two things I wanted to tell you before I left. Really? What was that? 
I'm sorry I won't be here for your birthday, but I can't get back until Sunday night. I... Please, Victoria. Sorry, I forgot. I've arranged everything. The caterers will be here at noon. We'll have the same young man to park the cars. My secretary took care of the invitations. Here's the guest list. Okay. Victoria! Don't you want to see it? Well, it's the same list as always, isn't it? Yes. Uh... Roger Kelly will be here at 8 tonight to take you to the play. His mother called. <laughs> What's the matter? Roger break his arm? Why, no. He... I wish you wouldn't take that attitude, Victoria. Since he graduated, his father's made him a junior partner. He's awfully busy. <laughs> Wish I were that busy. Now, just one more thing before I get on my way. There are some people deliberately trying to delay construction on the new building. I've given Mr. Webster strict instructions to break their lease. If you hear from him before I get back, I want you to be absolutely firm. You can speak for me. I want them out. No excuses. I'll be firm. See that you are. It's never too early to start taking charge. <clears throat> yes, John? Well, there's a young man, a Mr. Mel Hudson, to see Miss Crawford. Well, send him in. Yes, Miss Victoria. looking for Miss Crawford. I'm Miss Crawford. Oh, well, then it must be Mrs. Crawford. There is no uh, Mrs. Crawford. I, I don't believe we've met, Mr. Uh... Hudson. Mel Hudson. Yes, well, you must want Miss Roberta Crawford. Who are you? Her niece, Vicky. Well, where can I find your aunt? She's out of town. Maybe I could help you. I'm afraid you're a little young for what I have to say. Really? Try me. You see, she always leaves me in charge when she's away. Well, don't tell me you're the one that's responsible for all this. All what, Mr... Uh... Hudson. Hudson. Mr. Hudson, we run a very large and busy organization. I'm afraid you'll just have to be more specific. All right, I'll be more specific. I head a co-op, which runs the Vanguard. It's a... I know what it is. Then you know your aunt owns the building we're leasing. Of course. And you're the people that are trying to sabotage your construction project. We're trying to sabotage? Look, I don't care if she wants to put up a 70-story building. You're not going to break our lease, no matter what kind of crooked maneuvers you try. Are you calling me dishonest? What would you call sending inspectors from the health department, the fire department, the police, all in one day? You must think you own City Hall. If you operate legally, I don't see why that should bother you. It may bother us, but it won't close us up. I'm sorry I troubled you, Miss Crawford. I, I came here hoping I could work something out. I expected a businesswoman, not a spoiled brat. I'd like to speak to Mr. Roger Kelly, please. My, my science teacher, Mr. Smith, he never thought I'd become a scientist. <laughs> Did you, Mr. Smith? Where you been, buddy boy? Oh, just went for a little walk. Yeah, well, while you were gone, we had some more company. Who this time? The electrical inspector. Well, they don't miss a trick, do they? Well, I think they won this one. Show him the octopus, baby. What'd he say? He didn't call. He wrote a citation. We got a few days to fix it up. Well, that's one break. This means an electrical contract or a permit. The works. Feed it a fish, baby. It's got to last the weekend. No, stay where you are. It's all right. 
How's the calculus? Man, I'm a poet. Much too sensitive for math. So how was the meeting? No score. Never trust the landlady. It wasn't the landlady. It was her niece. Her niece? How old? 20 or so. So what happened to the Hudson charm? We should have it made. We should. We could have, except like a clod, I blew my top. Don't tell me the chick really put you down. Oh, it's not the Crawford girl I'm worried about. It's, it's what she could do to the club. What can they do they haven't tried already? I have a feeling they just scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. So what's to do? Just pray for a second chance in Miss Vicky Crawford. I probably won't get it. But if I do, she'll get a snow job that'll make Sun Valley look like Palm Springs. Mad, mad love and mad, mad eyes. Mad, 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 cause you told me lies. I'm mad, baby, I'm mad. Parties, mad, mad scenes Mad, mad, mad Cause you spoiled my dreams I'm mad Hey, baby, I'm mad Your arms that crept around my neck Just made my life a total wreck those looks you gave me stuck like glue Now I can't get rid of you Mad, mad music, mad, mad song Mad, 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 cause you done me wrong I'm mad, ooh, baby, I'm mad our first show for this evening. If you dug the sounds, we want you to stick around because we got another one. Right now, it's intermission time. Good evening, folks. This way, please. What is this, one of these hoot nanny joints? Scotch on the rocks. I'm sorry, sir, but we don't serve liquor here. Would you like to look at the menu? What are we supposed to do here? I can't even get a drink. Roger, please. Cola, coffee, sandwiches. This is a place for kids. If you don't like it, you can always leave. Well, now you're talking. But I'm staying. You came with me, baby. You're leaving with me. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, how does a guy go about getting a drink around here? <laughs> Sorry, man, no lunch. Cats come here to dig the sounds. Come on, baby. Uh, wrong night, friend. Wrestling's on Tuesday. 
Come on, baby, let's go. Hit me a can. Check. I got my own wheels. Tonight, you leave the driving to us. Well, looks like a new ball game. Well, you run a club, you gotta expect trouble. Ah, forget about him. You know who that girl is inside? You mean the swinging little chick in the white dress? That's Miss Crawford. The Miss Crawford? And we just threw her boyfriend out. Could any gentleman do less? You flipped? Thinking all the time I'd get that second chance at bat. Now this time, we use a new strategy. Well, that's a different approach. Hey, you better get back in there before she walks. Uh, don't worry about old dad. You better get in there and get that next show going. I just started a riot. What am I supposed to do for an encore? Well, that's your problem, buddy boy. I got mine. I'm uh, looking for a Miss Crawford. I'm Miss Crawford. Well, would you like to sit down? Thank you. Did you uh, order? Uh, what would you like? Just an espresso, please. I'd uh, I'd like to apologize for this afternoon. I uh, two espressos. Right. Okay, two espressos, and will that be all? Listen, I understand. It's all right. Oh, I'm awfully sorry about the uh, turbans. Well, that happens. Excuse me. Your friend just swung back in the cab and got his own car. Oh, listen, I better... No, it's too late. You already cut out. Thanks, Pete. Uh, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll get you up. No, I've been too much trouble already. Uh, no trouble at all. I still think it'd be better if I took a cab. To, uh, new acquaintance. Starting right now? Starting right now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our second show of this evening at the Vanguard. You'll have to excuse me a little bit this show, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm very, very tired. I spent all day down at the beach today, and I was very crowded down there. It was so crowded that lifeguards were standing. <laughs> very crowded. We had a ball. We had a ball down there this afternoon. And we took off this morning, very early this morning, in the car. We got out to the beach, and we threw the ball around. We played tag. We twisted. And then we got out of the car. <laughs> but actually, just before we went surfing, we did go surfing. Just before we went surfing, I picked up the seashell, very beautiful seashell. And you know, usually, you're supposed to hear the ocean roar in it, right? All I could hear was Lloyd Bridges yelling, help, help. <laughs> but actually, this next number, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to do by myself. And I'd like to introduce a few celebrities to help me do it for you. We hope you recognize them. I bought my shelf a surfboard. Went down to the sea. I took my baby with me. Cause she's cute as she can be. Then we were surfing when a storm came up and I took her little hand. When a wave took us a thousand miles right to what to say land, what to say land. What to say land. What to say land. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Si, si, amigo. Means welcome to what to say land. A really big wave was coming. And I took my baby's hand. We jumped up on that really big wave. Goodbye, what to say land? What to say land? What to say land? Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Adios, amigo. Means goodbye to. 
Watutu land. Blown a fuse. Excuse me. Say something, Pete. Keep it alive. I'll check. I've heard of baby spots, but this is ridiculous. Just blew a fuse. I better check the box. I just checked. They're all okay. The octopus? That 15-way socket underneath the coffee bar. Mm. Are you sure about the fuses? Well, I've changed them often enough. The power's on up and down the street. Guess we better call the power company. You can't do that. We've got a room full of people out here. Well, who gave the instructions? Well, what right do they have? Yeah, you bet I'll be down there in the morning. Ah, so, it's better to light one little candle than to curse the darkness. Thank you. So what happened? Well, her aunt had the juice turned off. Well, how could she do that? Under our lease, the owner pays utilities. Dear, well, I'm sure you can get it straightened out in the morning. Great. What do we do tonight? Everybody's left. Stay right too. Except you. It was awful nice of you to stay. Well, thank you, but I guess I'd better go too. I mean, well, it's kind of silly to stay open for one customer. Well, we've stayed open for no customers. Why don't you be our guest tonight? Let's go down front. Well... Uh, at least have one for the road. Okay? Sure, come on. Well, just one. Well... I'm gonna knock it off. Watch the store? Good night, Pete. Thanks. My pleasure. Take it easy, Pete. Later. Well, shall we go? Let me drive you? Mm -hmm. I'll lock up.
been holding out on me. You have a great voice. Oh, well, thank you, but, uh, well, it's not really mine. Uh, shall we go? I wanted to ask you about the Vanguard lease. Now, I wouldn't worry about the vanguard, Miss Vicky. Just leave it in my hands. Well, I would, except my aunt will want to know what's been done. As your aunt's attorney... Wait, you're my attorney, too. Aren't you, Mr. Webster? Why, yes. Yes, well, I've been wanting to ask you something. I'm sure we can solve any problem a young lady like you might have in jig time. Mm -hmm. Do we have a contract? I mean, you and I. I don't understand you, Miss Crawford. We have no contract, of course, but I always understood. Of course you have, Mr. Webster. And I'd be the last one to upset any such arrangement. Um, now, I'm such a scatterbrain. Where were we? We were discussing the Vanguard. Oh, yes. Before she left, my aunt asked me to tell her if there'd been any new developments. Have there been? Several. I've been working very hard on it. But they're still there. Not for long, Miss Crawford, not for long. Let me give you a rundown. First thing yesterday, we had the health department in. As a result, they have to get a new disposal container for the paper cups and napkins and so forth. Then they had a visit from the fire department. They received a citation for leaving a ladder in the exit hallway. The police were next. In the future, night parking regulations will be strictly enforced. Since their check due the day before yesterday hadn't arrived, last night I had the electric power turned off. Of course, it's been turned on again, but it served its purpose. Oh, yes, the electrical inspector. <laughs> Wonderful. I know my aunt will be so pleased. But we haven't exactly um, gotten them out yet, have we? Tonight, I have another surprise in store for them. Really? What is it? I can forget the place that we met, the time that our love had its start. Yes, I can get you out of my mind, little girl, but I can't get you out of my heart. Though every word you said will be gone as all of our dreams fall apart, I can get you out of my mind, little girl, but I can't get you out of my heart Looks like you're here to stay always And no matter what I do Seems as though I'll always love you Soon every tear will all disappear and maybe a new love will start Yes, I can get you out of my mind, little girl But I can't get you out of my heart Looks like you're here to stay always And no matter what I do Seems as though I'll always love you Soon every tear Will all disappear And maybe a new love will start Yes, I can get you out of my mind, little girl But I'll never get you Out 
of my to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, is take one of Shakespeare's immortal classics, Julius Caesar, and ruin it. Dang, just mess it up really good. Now, as the play opens, we see the great Caesar, and he's walking to the games with his very good friend, Mark Antony. And in the crowd along the way, he sees Cassius speaking to Brutus. And he doesn't like the look in Cassius' eyes, so he remarks about it to Mark Antony. the eye too much. <laughs> and very dramatically says, Hey! Smarter than the average Roman? Come on, wise guy. This is legit. I'm from the Rome Demolition Company. We got a contract to wreck the next building. What, at night? Uh... Howdy, Irving. My name's Mel Hudson. You may call me Mr. Hudson. Come on. We start night demolition, and they have a cop there waiting for us. We file a formal complaint with the Anti-Noise League, and two hours earlier, they volunteered to do a benefit for the League. Well, how did things work out last night, Mr. Webster? You may call me Bruce. How did things work out last night, Bruce? We fenced off the parking lot, as you suggested. Unfortunately, the tenants and the building on the other side of the lot were holding a stockholders meeting. They didn't know about the fence. Yes, Bruce. Two of their biggest investors drove their limousines right through our two railings. Were they damaged? Just the front fenders and grills. What I don't understand is how this Mel Hudson arranged so quickly for temporary parking with a supermarket. You mean to tell me that no one received a parking ticket? None of their customers. But while I was in explaining to the other tenants, they tagged my car. Mr. Webster, Bruce, maybe we ought to try friendlier tactics. Absolutely not. If they want to play dirty, I'll play dirty. I don't like low tactics, but they've asked for it. Goodbye, Miss Vicky. Goodbye. Oh, and if I think of anything really stinking, I'll call you. Yes, Miss Crawford? Did you make all the arrangements for my birthday party? Yes, I did. Well, would you call the caterers for me, please? I'd like to invite a few more people. It's not that I don't want to come, believe me. It's just that I wouldn't feel right accepting your aunt's hospitality under the circumstances. It's not my aunt's, it's my hospitality. Well, besides, I've already told the caterers that you were all coming. I'm not so sure the kids can make it. You said you thought they could. Come on, Mel, don't be a drag. I helped you out. I know you did. That's the problem. But what's your aunt going to say when she gets back? Come to the party. Find out. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I shouldn't have made you do it. Mel, believe me, you didn't make me do anything. I did what I did because I wanted to. And I'm going to keep on doing it. 
You mean you kissed? Strike two. All right. I'll ask them. What more can I do? Well, you can see that they get here. Oh, say, come on. I want to show you something. Oh, I hardly get them no more. You really can't get this one. Look at it. You passed me by, sung by Carol Crawford. Remember when I said my voice wasn't really mine? She was my mother. Carol Crawford? Wasn't she the singer that, uh... She and Dad were killed in a plane crash. They were with a USO troop about a week before the war ended. I remember now. Can we listen to it? It's kind of old and scratchy. I just play it on special occasions. I'd like to think that this was a special occasion. Victoria! Uh, Robbie, I didn't expect you back. Obviously. We were just, I could see what you were just. Who is this young man? Miss Crawford, my name is... No, you better go. I'd rather you would. All right, if that's what you want. I'll call you. Goodbye, Miss Crawford. Now, do you mind telling me that young man's name? That was Mel Hudson. I think you knew that already. The one who runs the vanguard. Oh, he doesn't run it. It's a co-op. Nevertheless, he speaks for them. And apparently quite well, from what that idiot Webster told me when I got back to the office. You may be able to fool him, Victoria, but you can't fool me. Aunt Robbie, I don't think you're being fair to them. That doesn't excuse your taking sides against me. But if you could have seen the things that Bruce... Mr. Webster was doing to them. I know perfectly well I told him what to do. Well, I think you're wrong. You have no more business sense than your father. I thought I'd trained you better. Not if you trained me to cheat people. You could have offered to buy their lease. Of course I could. At some ridiculous inflated price. This way they'll be glad to sell. No, they won't. Not anymore. Then they'll discover that in business, the side with money always wins. Now, Victoria, I don't want you to see those people again. But I've invited them to my party. I know. Cancel the invitations. Give some excuse. Aunt Robbie, I've always listened to you. But now I think maybe that was a mistake. Are you defying me, Victoria? I'm simply saying that if my friends aren't invited to the party, then I'm not coming either then there'll be no party. Victoria, where are you going? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that'll be great. Morning. Morning. Where's the Vicky chick? Oh, she'll be in later. She stayed over at Judy's house last night. <laughs> Seeing how the swinging half lives, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Back off, man. I wasn't putting her down. How's business? Well, that Webster fella didn't exactly help us. But if the weekend holds out, I think we'll be in the black. Speak of the devil. I'm looking for Miss Crawford. Miss Victoria Crawford. Well, she isn't here. I'll wait. Suit yourself. But you'll have to wait outside. What's the matter with in here? 
The air conditioning's off, man. You know what I mean? I'll be back. Too much. Well, thank you. Judy and I picked it out. Oh, say, did you see my sign? Yeah. I'm... I'm not so sure it's a good idea, though, Vicky. Oh, come on. I won't get you any trouble. Well, it's not us I'm worried about. It's you. Miss Crawford. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning. I want you to come with me. Oh, where are we going? Home, where you belong. What if I don't want to go? I'm sure you're aware there are laws regarding the relationship of a minor to her guardian. But you're forgetting just one thing. I doubt that very much. But you are. You see, today, I'm a woman. 21. But your birthday party is going to be tomorrow. For your information, Mr. Webster, you never throw a daytime party on a weekday. No, the party was going to be tomorrow, but today is my birthday. Then I can assume you're not coming with me. Mm hmm I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, I'm sure I do. Oh, Mr. Webster, seeing as I'm 21, I think there are a few properties and things I receive. There'll be papers to sign. I'll have my attorney contact you. <laughs> Since there's no doubt but that she was 21, there was nothing I could do. As a matter of fact, her last words were, she would have her attorney contact me. The point is, you failed. It's getting to be a habit with you. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You can afford to lose the battle so long as you win the war. Where on earth did you pick up that idiotic idea? I have a board meeting this afternoon. But tonight, you and I are going down to that place. This battle isn't lost, yet. I'm sorry, but we're full this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Vanguard. At this time, we'd like to present the Sherwoods. Some people say he's a no count. Others say he's no good. But he's just a natural born traveling man. Doing what he thinks he should, oh yeah. Doing what he thinks he should. And he don't give up about a green back of dollar. Spend it as fast as he can. For a wailing song and a good guitar. The only things that he understands, oh boy. The only things that he understands. When he was a little baby, his mama said, hey, son, travel where you will and grow to be a man and sing what must be sung, oh, boy, sing what must be sung. 
And he don't give a hmm about a green back a dollar Spend it as fast as he can For a wailing song and a good guitar The only things that he understands, oh boy The only things that he understands Now that he's a grown man He's traveled here and there He's learned that a bottle of brandy and a song The only ones who ever care, oh yeah The only ones who ever care And he don't give a hmm about a greenback a dollar Spend it as fast as he can For a wailing song and a good guitar The only things that he understands, oh yeah The only things that he understands The only things that he understands, oh boy The only things that he understands The Sherwoods, ladies and gentlemen, and now the Vanguard takes great pleasure in presenting a brand new sound. Let's really hear it for Miss Vicki Crawford. Vicki? Leaves are green, sparrows fly, world is spring again, still you pass me by. Yellow sun, hot July. Flakes fly, world is winter now, still you pass me by, still you pass me by. Seen a ghost. I have. She's so much like her mother, it's frightening. Well, you could always handle her mother, they tell me. Should we go down to her dressing room, read her the riot act? No. You're not going to win the battle this way. Will you shut up? Play it cool, baby. There's nothing she can do to you. Thanks, Pete. Good night. Later. You finished? Almost. One more light. Oh. Did you hurt yourself? 
tangle foot. Gotta get that fixed, Mundy. Sing beautiful tonight, baby. Thank you. I just asked you to find her. That should be simple enough. She can't have gone far. Never mind, she just walked in. I said never mind. Victoria, I've been looking everywhere for you. I came up here because I think that was the worst thing I've ever heard of anyone doing. And I just wanted to tell you that. That will be all. You may close the door. Please sit down, Victoria. There's no need to sit down. I won't be here that long. You really believe I burned that place down, don't you? I think you'd do anything to get your own way. You're spoiled and selfish and cruel. No. Not cruel. Spoiled? Perhaps. Selfish? Because I've had to be. But not cruel. What do you call burning down the vanguard? Just so you could do what you wanted to do. Everything's always had to be your way. You don't care what other people want or how much work they do. Vicky. I did not burn down the vanguard. I don't believe you. I'll be just a minute, Mr. Hudson. Vicki, we've been looking all over for you. What are you doing here? You might as well come in, Mr. Hudson. I ask him. What's that? Your aunt has just offered to transfer the lease to a new building over on Santa Monica. My niece thinks I burned down the vanguard. Who else would have done it? It was an electrical fire. That wire monstrosity under the counter. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry. I really don't know what else to say. Don't say anything. There is something I've been meaning to say to you. Many happy returns of the day.
I walked on the crest of the mountain Looking down at the rivers and streams A great voice said to me on the mountain Little man, better follow your dreams So that very day I went on my way And the voice was always my guide And I made my life And I found my love Now she stands at my side When we walk on the crest of the mountain Looking down at the rivers and streams I can hear the great voice on the mountain Say, it's a good thing you followed your dreams So that very day I went on my way And the voice was always my guide And I made my life Yes, I found my love Now she stands here at my side When we walk on the crest of the mountain Looking down at the rivers and streams I can hear the great voice on the mountain say It's a good thing you followed your dreams It's a good thing you followed Say he's a no count, others say he's no good, but he's just a natural born traveling man, doing what he thinks he should, oh yeah, doing what he thinks he should. And he don't give up about a green back dollar, spend it as fast as he can for a wedding song and a good guitar. The only things that he understands, oh boy, the only things that he understands. When he was a little baby, his mama said, hey son, travel where you will and grow to be a man, and sing what must be sung, oh boy, sing what must be sung. Only things that he understands, oh boy, the only things that he understands. Now that he's a grown man, he's traveled here and there. He's learned that a bottle of brandy and a song, the only ones who ever care, oh yeah, the only ones who ever care. About a green back and dollar Spend it as fast as he can For a wailing song and a good guitar The only things that he understands, oh boy The only things that he understands, oh boy The only things that he understands Hey, 
Hey, when are we gonna move the Vanguard into the new building? Oh, it'd be at least a couple weeks before we even fix it up. Take yourself a vacation, you know? <laughs> vacation? Who's got time? I got finals. Hey, who started the shop talk? This is a birthday party. Come on. 